welcome to my peep box and this online, remotely accessible, digital, historical information transfer resource, or my peep show talk. My name is Dr. Tony Liddington and I research historical popular entertainment forms, reimagine them and apply them to contemporary contexts. This talk is itself a part of that process. Now, as part of our academic research inquiry into theatre and visual culture in the 19th century, I have devised a new peep show which is a classic of the genre, The Vampire or the Bride of the Isles by J.R. Planchet. Come and see the wonder of all wonders that ever the world has wondered at. This was the clarion catchphrase of Gustavus Catafelto, the 18th century showman and quack who brought stories and wonderment to ordinary people before the age of moving pictures. Such entertainments sprang from the cabinets of curiosity that provided the images for reminiscence and storytelling in the 18th century and paved the way for itinerant showmen like Sergeant Bell in the 19th century, who wandered around the countryside of Britain and used their ingenious devices and the exotic experience of peeping into an animated world to tell stories. There hasn't been a peep show for 150 years. We began by making a cardboard prototype, which we mocked up by consulting contemporary illustrations. And eventually, we constructed it with plywood and mounted it on a 19th century cast iron cart chassis with iron hooped wheels. Peep show men re men as they were known, carted their paraphernalia from village to village, fair to fair, or anywhere that there was a ready audience. In an age before moving pictures, the ra re men animated his peep show box and showed historical events as well as moralistic and fantastical tales. Peep shows explored the potential of new technological discoveries, especially optical devices, and they became associated not only with storytelling, but also with new scientific discoveries and the presentation of other worlds. Like a conventional Victorian theatre, our peep show has a scenic arch, eggs and borders, lighting and smoke effects, swagged and ruched tabs, stage machinery and trapdoors. But in addition, our 21st century interpretation has digital sound and projections, all run from lithium batteries, which means it can be presented in any of the locations that Rari men would originally have performed, without the need for an electrical supply. The peep show is a private experience, providing a controlled environment in which light and sound and story create an intimate, immersive world, both illusory and haptic, mediated and immediate. As always with peep shows, it's necessary to attract the passing crowd. So I drum up trade by barking, blowing horns and a hand-cranked barrel organ, first introduced into Britain around the time of Planchet's work. Monkeys or squirrels were used by the Rari men, but I simply get my boy to dance. Boy! Planchet's 1820 play was an adaptation and translation of John Polidori's story, The Vampire, which had been published a year earlier. Planchet altered some of the characters' relationships and added humour into the somewhat macabre proceedings, and in view of this, I felt 
that it would be appropriate to take my own liberties with the original structure, particularly as the peep show would have to be performed by no more than four characters and the entire plot completed within 20 minutes. My previous experience of creating peep shows had taught me that people are reluctant to lean down to look inside a peephole for more than about a quarter of an hour. And also, if we were busking a crowd, the faster the turnaround, the better. And such practical considerations have been a major part of our embodied historical research. The, 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 the story required drastically shortening in length, so reducing the core story to its most essential elements was a key task. It was also important to consider how gender tropes were presented for a 21st century story. The original tale had very compliant, reactive female roles, and whilst I didn't want to render the baddie Ruthven impotent, I wanted the key moments of resistance to come from the female characters. It was impossible to do very much with Margaret, the eponymous Bride of the Isles, who was bewitched by the vampire Ruthven. However, I altered the storyline so that it was her maid Effie who fired the shots to fell Ruthven and then reveal the truth to Lord Ronald. In Planchet's text, the shot is fired by Effie's fiancé, Robert, but I removed the Effie-Robert subplot entirely to keep the storyline sharp and short, as well as ethically acceptable for a modern audience. In keeping with the era, I decided to use 2D paper theatre characters, like those manufactured by Pollux as the characters on the stage. A visual designer helped evolve these ideas from historical illustrations into a more contemporary, yet period, representation. My aim was to animate all aspects of the performance so that there was a visual or oral treat for the audience every few moments. Just like now. I present the peep show as the ra Ri man basing my costume on the many illustrations and engravings from the era by Cruikshank and others. I chose my character to be a veteran of the Battle of Waterloo, with an attractive but fanciful top coat with gold bullion epaulets, a Georgian waistcoat, knee breeches and leg stockings. I wear a bicorn hat with showy military trimmings and buckled shoes of the period. My Napoleonic veteran status offers both the required sagacity and authority, as well as being typical of a Rari showman's garb. I am aided by a walking cane, which doubles as a pointer, and a mute boy apprentice suitably attired in a low-status ship's cruise outfit of the period. The role of boy was practical insofar as I needed more than one person to help manoeuvre and operate the device, and also to help in managing the audience as they shift from passive observers to peepers. I didn't want to build a relationship with dialogue or double act banter with the boy, but rather for him to represent a naive, clown-like foil to the garrulous master show. Boy is an apprentice to the ra -ri man and also his minder. It has been a feature of my peep show work to demonstrate the cinegraphic techniques and stage machinery of 19th century visual popular culture. The two principal scenes of the Great Hall, the Gothic Chapel, were painted onto scrolling canvas or peristrophic scenery. Lightning effects were achieved within the peep box, and the sound effect of thunder with a thunder tube. And the vampire is most famous for the vampire trap, to which this play gave its name. It is the climax of the show, both on stage and inside the peep box. It took a lot of experimentation. <laughs> Different forms of technological referencing have been part of the bricolage of influences used to make this piece. Instead of simply using a digital device for the underscore of the chapel scene, we recorded Felix Mendelssohn's 1830s Prelude and Fugue in D minor, replayed on a 1970s cassette player adjacent to the peepers as part of an assemblage of technical reproduction. Similarly, the music for the short peep show film set in Fingal's cave, as in Planchet's original work, 
used Mendelssohn's Hebrides Overture, also known as Fingal's Cave, to provide appropriate dramatic accompaniment. The filming itself deliberately referenced earlier film techniques of F.W. Morneau's Nosferatu, Anna Barbara's Scooby-Doo, and paper theatre practices of the last 300 years. Just like the peep shows of the past, this peep show vampire production deliberately engages with past practices to provide resonances and meanings that are historical and contemporary, social and technological, profound and accessible. Mikhail Bakhtin describes this accretion of meanings of historical form in the contemporary present as heteroglossia. Ultimately, it is a serious attempt to reimagine the excitement and wonder of peep shows in the past by offering something that is fun and intriguing in the present. Our vampire peep show is the latest wonder of all wonders that ever.